Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We boil things off this afternoon with cricket. Well, West Indies will be hoping to level the three-match Richards Bodrum series when they take on England in the second test at Trent Bridge in Nottingham on Thursday. Well, despite suffering a humiliating innings and 114 runs defeat in the first test at Lords, West Indies have named an unchanged 11 for the second test. These are the players. So, of course, we have Craig Brathwaite, Alec Atenez, Joshua De Silva, Kevin Hodge, Jason Holder, Al Zari Joseph, Shamar Joseph, Mikhail Louis, Kirk McKenzie, Gurikesh Moti, and Jaden Seals. Well, history is on the side of the Caribbean men as they boast a winning record at Trent Bridge, with their only defeat coming in their last encounter back in 2012. So, of course, as the graphic explains, um, West Indies at Trent Bridge in test. Um, the result, they've won by 10 wickets in, in that match. Of course, um, that was in 1950. They drew the second match in 1957. Then, Lance, as you can see, they won again by 139 runs in that match in 1966. Let's move along now to 1976, where they drew that match. They won again by two wickets in 1980. Then in 1988, we had another draw, but that was followed by a win, a nine-wicket win in 1991. Then, of course, in 1995, we had a draw again. And what about that last Lance? Nine wickets in May of 2012. Well, ahead of the match, West Indies skipper Craig Braswaite stressed the need for the team to improve its batting. I think it's pretty simple what we got to do. Um, we got to bat better. Obviously, we got to find a way. Um, wish we had some discussions around, you know, different things we can do better as a team. Um, you know, there are still a bit of positives, you know, with, with the bat. Uh, with the ball, you know, as I said before, 50, 60 runs too many, but it was a positive to get 10 wickets. But with the bat, we just got to put runs on the board. It's, it's simple. Meanwhile, host England will look to wrap up the series and regain the Richards Bottom Trophy. They have made a single change to their playing 11 for the second test, recalling fast bowler Mark Wood to replace the retired James Anderson. Ahead of the match, England skipper Ben Stokes revealed that Goss Atkinson will be promoted to opening the bowling with the newly drafted Mark Woods. This is what Ben Stokes had to say. You ask any batter in the world, whether it be Joe Root, Steve Smith, Manus Labuschagne, pace him up is a massive weapon that makes you do different things. It makes you think differently, but also there has got to be skill attached to your pace. Gus showed that last week, that he's more than just an out-and-out -out quick bowler. He's incredibly skillful as is Mark Wood. The ability for him to be able to bowl as quickly as he does but have the control and swing as well is something that's very rare in someone who bowls that fast. Well, joining us now via Zoom to preview the second test is our cricket correspondent, Fazir Mohammed. Fazir is currently in England doing radio commentary covering the series for the BBC. Faz, good afternoon. Welcome back. Good afternoon, good evening to you. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how things shape up uh, starting tomorrow. Yeah, I was listening to that press conference with Craig Brassweight, and I have to say it was a bit shocking to hear your voice in the press conference for me um, asking some really difficult questions based on um, what was asked to him and what you asked as well. How do you feel the mood is like in the camp as we get ready to try to, one, bounce back from that embarrassing first test defeat and really try to put on a competitive fight in the second test? Well, I think the team is trying to feed off what happened in Australia and, and indeed what happened against England in 2017, where the West Indies lost uh, the first test of both those series. 
uh, it was embarrassingly one-sided uh, as it as it was at Lords last week, and, and therefore they're they're looking to probably recapture that same sort of spirit. And looking at them at training today at Trent Bridge, you you always see a, a buoyant uh, West Indies team, whatever the situation, uh, and really whatever the captain says, whatever the questions asked, whatever uh, however controversial or the situation might be, it's really up to those players themselves. Uh, when play starts tomorrow morning, uh, God willing, six o'clock Eastern Caribbean time. Five o'clock at Jamaican time uh, to really be totally focused. Whether it's batting first or bowling first, uh, there, there's really little, little wiggle room. If you're one nil down in a three-match series, another poor performance and the series is over. Yeah, were you surprised by the captain and of course the team going with an unchanged eleven? Not at all. The only option that I saw would have been, as I mentioned at the end of the first test match, was whether or not Shamar Joseph uh, was fully fit. Clearly, uh, what would have occurred in the first test match was the result of a lack of proper work, uh, the cramps that he suffered. And that raises the question again about whether or not we prepare our players properly. The fact that he only bowled, what, 14 overs of competitive cricket between January and July, to really think that someone like that would be ready, now, never mind how much practice he would have had, would be ready for test match cricket. That 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 the, the folly of that thinking was certainly exposed in the first test match. So, no, I, I didn't really expect that there would be any changes because, I, again, you, you would only think of a change if you're confident that the replacement would do significantly better. And I don't think that is the case this time. Yeah, and Faz, in the same press conference that I mentioned before, um, one of the things when Craig was asked about, you know, bouncing back from that defeat, because that was like a common narrative throughout the entire press conference, one of the things he said, and it really stood out for me to the point where I had to write it down, and he was saying, like, you know, it's pretty easy. We just have to bat better. And to me... Um, because of how my brain works, the first thing I thought, Faz, is, is it really that easy for us to just bat better? Because I feel as if, you know, the only way moving forward, and this is one of the narrative that has, you know, the journalists have been using, making the headlines as we get ready for this, is that people like Craig Brathwaite, who would be considered the senior players, the key members of the team, really need, need to lead from in front. I'm talking about Craig Brathwaite and Jason Holder. And of course, I can go on with the senior names. But what say you? Is it pretty easy? We just need to bat better. Well, I suppose it's, it's, it's easy in the sense of understanding what you need to do. Yes. It's not easy as to translate it into reality. And I think that is the point you was making. Is often what we say, something might be simple, but it's not easy in the sense that it's simple to understand what the West Indies need to do. And he was right, but better. It doesn't take a genius to work that out. But is it easy to do? No. And therefore, that's why we have to see whether the West Indies have learned their lessons, whether the practice has been put in, whether the, the, the temperan temperament is there. Because that's another thing. Because for quite a few of the players, they got starts, but then got out. Uh, look at the dismissal of Craig Brathwaite, uh, dragging one onto his stumps in the first innings. Of course, he fell to Jimmy Anderson in the second innings as the West Indies faded away. So, so really, it's about seeing whether or not the West Indies would have, one, learned the lessons from the first test experience and indeed have put in enough work, both technically and temperamentally, to not make the same mistakes. Yeah, and Goss Atkinson, he really was the headline um, despite James Anderson um, playing his last test match. Debut figures of 12 for 106. Top, top star from the debutant. Um, he will now be opening the bowling for England. What do you think about that? That's going to present a very interesting challenge for the West Indies because if the West Indies, for example, are batting first tomorrow, and let's put it in perspective, Trent Bridge is known to be a better batting surface than Lords, than many of the England venues. And indeed, if the weather is anything like what we had today, where it was clear, it was bright, it was almost warm, then it might be a good idea to bat first on winning the toss. It might sound foolish, given the West Indies and how they performed with the bat in the first test match. But if you could see through the first session and it generally flattens out and the weather is good, then you're well set. 
But that might, again, be a calculated gamble. But to answer your specific question, when you talk about Gus Atkinson with his pace and control, as Ben Stokes talked about it, and then you have the raw pace of a Mark Wood, it could make for a very difficult examination. And th But that is what you have to expect. You're playing test cricket. You can't shy away from these sorts of challenges because whether it's the first morning of the test or somewhere in mid-afternoon on the second day or sometime earlier, you have to face the music at some point and that, that's really where it's going to challenge Craig Bradford who's had a poor run for more than a year now it's going to challenge uh, Mikhail Louis just in his second test match and the rest of the batting which is in the main very inexperienced so however you look at it whether it's Gus Atkinson whether it's Mark Wood whether it's Ben Stokes whether it's Chris Wokes or, or the spin of Shoei Bashir if he's actually called upon to bowl it's up to the West Indies batting lineup to show that what happened at Lords is something that has more to do with a lack of experience in the, those conditions, a lack of readiness, and now that they're ready for the challenge. Yeah, Faz, just to follow up on the question Mariah put to you with um, uh, Gus Atkinson, pre-match, Captain Stokes speaking very, very, very highly of him, considering him, and to use his words, an incredibly skillful bowler, and he said a lot of favorable things as well, um, is is he that good? Is is Atkinson that good, or is uh, Ben Stokes just riling up his 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 rookie to deliver another uh, strong performance in the second test? It, it might be a bit of that, Lance, but I, I think what we have come to learn, certainly in, in my in my time in the media, and especially over the last few years, that the words "incredible," "amazing." Uh, are used loosely uh, because everything is amazing, everything is incredible. You take a decent catch, a slip is an amazing catch. You you, you bowl a, a good delivery that, that hits the top of the off stump, it's incredible. Everything is incredible, everything is amazing. So to the point where it almost becomes useless to you to use those words. But but as you to, to put it in context with what you said, it's it's obviously just to, to encourage the young man even more. But there's nothing incredible as to what he did because this is what you, you want to see from a quality fast bowler. And uh, incredible means it's unbelievable. But, but, but it is what you generally expect. For someone coming into test cricket, brand new, it, it, it is something outstanding. But for those who would be aware, and, and again, someone like Gus Atkinson has been with the England setup for more than a year now. He's been at two World Cups, didn't play. He was on the tour to India, didn't play. But it's sort of like how the West Indies would have had things in our glory period of the 1980s. The likes of Courtney Walsh, Ian Bishop, went on two or three tours without playing a, a test match or an international to get them attuned yeah. to what is required at the highest level. Yeah, Brian, of Brian Lara had paid his dues as well. Brian Lara paid his dues. He went on a tour of 1991, mm -hmm. didn't, didn't play a match. He had played in 1990, but went on a full tour in 1991. But wasn't selected for, for, until 1992. So, again, it's about getting you familiar with that environment and creating that hunger so that even if you're successful once, you understand that it's about really kicking on and, and getting even better if you can, or at least maintaining a, a very good level of consistent excellence. Yeah, a little bit more, Faz, on the conditions expected at Trent Bridge, which you touched on earlier on. At the moment, sunny conditions. Um, a match preview I saw today suggested that there's some live grass on the pitch, even though there's time to, to shave that. But um, based on the pitch conditions, and I heard you suggest that it may not be a bad idea for the West Indies to bat first if they win the toss, given the fact that Trent Bridge has been a reasonably good batting track if you, if you, if you, if you get in and, and, and settle, to, you know, to set yourself up for a, for a big score. But the, the, the conditions, any different based on what you're seeing from what you would have expected or the traditional Trent Bridge strip? No, not significantly different. Uh, and, and again... Because the West Indies don't have that recent experience of playing Test match cricket at that venue, there, there will be an element of the unknown, which is why you have to go on, on recent performances. And, and therefore, the general feeling in county matches and, and other fixtures is that it's a good surface for batting if the weather is good. And I think this is what is going to test the West Indies level of confidence. Because if tomorrow morning at 10.30, when the toss is taken, and it's bright sunshine, and the, the, the grass is, isn't, let's say, luxuriant 
on, on the pitch and, 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 and you, you back yourself to be able to, to go through the first couple of hours and get to lunch maybe with one, maximum two wickets down, then you can set yourself up for the afternoon. However, if you think that, look, you know, the, the, the bat, batsmen may be low on confidence, out of form, and then to face up to Mark Wood and Gus Atkinson with a new ball on day one, where they win the draws, it might be better to field the first and then put the onus on your bowlers to get some early wickets to give yourself the initiative that way. It, it really is the captain's call together with Andre Coley, assistant coach Jimmy Adams. It's their call, depending on how they feel the team is at their level of readiness and the conditions, of course, come tomorrow morning. Yeah, a lack of preparation has been identified, Faz, as one of the um, downfalls for the West Indies heading into this, into this series. I remember when you and I were a lot younger, teams would have two or three tour matches before the first test, and there would be even a tour match in between some of the test matches um, to give players um, better opportunities to prepare themselves for the test matches. How much does this hurt the West Indies that these things don't really happen anymore? It, it, of course, hurts the West Indies. It, it hurts any visiting team to any part of the world. Uh, it happened to England, you, you might recall. They actually opted not to play a warm-up match before the first test against the West Indies in Barbados in 2019, and they lost by over 300 runs. So, so th th there are certain things, Lance, uh, in the same way we're talking about Olympic preparations, uh, World Cup football preparations. Some things never change, and it, it, it talks, speaks to a level of preparation and readiness for particular encounters. Yes, you might be able to get away with it in T20 franchise, one day cricket and so on, but even then there has to be a level of readiness. When you're talking about playing in conditions that you're not familiar with, playing in an environment that, that, that is challenging, the moving ball, different conditions, cold weather, like you're playing in a fridge, it's, it's, it's different. It's, it's difficult. And therefore, to, to actually come into three test matches, and as you said correctly, whereas previously you'd have a four-day match between tests to get yourself ready again, a four-day match between the next test to get yourself ready again, that doesn't happen anymore. So it's back to back to back, three test matches, and you just have a three-day match before that. Obviously, it's not going to be enough, especially if many of your players, many of your batters especially, have really had no significant experience in these conditions. Yeah, agree with you 100%, Faz, because there was a time when West Indies would be touring England with, you know, Viv Richards and Walsh and Ambrose, and all of them pretty much played county cricket. So unlike now, where these players are, for the most part, completely unfamiliar with English conditions. There was a time when West Indies players were very, very comfortable in English conditions, weren't they? Indeed, they were. And even then, Lance, there, there were a host of first-class matches. That's right. I mean, That's right. The, 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 the way things happen is it's, it's interesting because just today, being at the ground, a, a colleague in the media showed me a program from the West Indies tour of England in 1939. And they actually played 23 first-class matches <laughs> apart from the three tests. And they actually had to leave early because there was something called World War II that was about to break out. So I, and I'm just saying that. Well, they left it, by boat. Is, yeah, yeah, they're by boat. There's no way you're going to get 23 first-class matches. Yeah. There's no way you're going to get three first-class matches yeah. uh, these days, the way the, the schedule is so crowded. Mm -hmm. But surely some greater effort should have been paid to the fact that you're talking about inexperienced yeah. players taking on England in their own conditions yeah. and a recognition that one first-class match could not have been enough. Yeah. All right, fans, we certainly hope that you will be allowed, based on the West Indies performance, to sit with your chest high with your <laughs> uh, fellow BBC English commentators and not feel in any way embarrassed by what the West Indies will be doing. Let's hope they, they do well and give Faz some, some energy for the commentary. Thanks, Faz. <laughs> <laughs> I try to retain my energy no matter what, but uh, as, you, as you said, it's a little dispiriting when you yeah. see performances like what happened in the first test. Yeah, all right, Faz. So 5 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time, the second <laughs> test at Trent Bridge. You're laughing, Mariah. Why are you laughing? <laughs> because I just know Faz was going to say that. His energy <laughs> is not dependent on West Indies, yeah. else he'll never have any. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I know that too, but I'm just saying <laughs> as, a, as a visiting commentator, um, if your team performs well, it it, 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 it it gives you that kind of um, that kind of that kind of energy that that would make you enjoy the commentary because these Englishmen are are are, are pretty mean when they're ready. How long have you known Faz? 
I have known Faz for about 30 years, I think. I've been on this show only for five years. Yeah. I get the sense that that would not affect him. Now, I'm not saying that it affects him, but the, the, <laughs> the, the British people will be gloating yeah. when they are dominating, and you don't want that. As a, as a guest commentator, you don't want that. As I said, Faz is a pro. So it's not that he'll be negatively affected by it. No, but I think Faz would have some witty comebacks for them. Of course so. he would. We know Faz, yes. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not suggesting that he's in any way intimidated by the conditions, but I would just like to see the West Indies give him a platform to yeah. sit comfortable with the British commentators. Got it. We'll be back with more. Good looking out. <laughs> after the break, yeah. <laughs>